that's what I want to do. There's room at the cross. If there's anybody else out there tonight and listening to this on, on TV, or not on TV, but on live streaming, uh, if you don't know him, take him as you, just ask him to come into your heart. There's room at the cross for you, amen? amen. You just have to believe in that he did die on that cross for us, and that he gave his only begotten son for us, and then you just ask him to forgive you of your sins, and, and you know, the joy that we have, the world can't give it to you, but God gives you joy. Amen. And God gives you peace. And God gives you the Holy Ghost. Amen? Every good thing comes from God. Amen? So listen to the words, there's room at the cross for you, kids say. Thank you, Lord. Just close your eyes and worship him tonight. Amen? Thank you, Lord. There's room
wearing a mask right now. I'm gonna leave it on just for a second before I preach. But I know we've got some that are wearing masks on account of physical conditions, and that's all right. Uh, they can uh, just kind of stay separated a little bit and, and, and still be fine. But one thing we've got to realize that this COVID-19 is beginning to break out in our area in a big way. We've got some of our neighbors right here close that's got COVID-19. We've got some of our friends in Saline County that's even in uh, Evansville Hospital, some of them on respirators and things like this. So we want to take this very seriously. And I want to leave the mask on just a second to show you if you get it set right, you don't steam up your glasses. But you've got to get it up high on your nose and bring the glasses down on the outside of it. And then you're going to be all right with it. So I just wanted to kind of do that for a little bit and let you see how that that would work. Now I'm going to take it off uh, to bring the message of the word to you. There's nobody any closer than 20 feet to me tonight, so I don't think I'll get so wound up I'll spit that far on you. <laughs> I don't have towels, by the way. But anyway, I, I did want to kind of share that tonight. And I know that we've got some that absolutely cannot put a mask on. And I don't know if they call but if they can't, that's all right. We'll still social distance with them. And we're going to do everything we can to keep one another from getting sick. Is that, is that a good thing? Amen. I think that's one of the best things that you and I can do is try to work for each other, with each other, and try to nip this thing, uh, kind of like Marty Five said, nip it in the bud. And uh, now you can tell how old I am. Huh? But in, anyway, I did, did want to talk about that just a little bit before we get started. And we do have masks out here. We do have uh, the cleaner for our hands out here that uh, you can also use. And, uh, wanting to do everything we can. I don't want to see our church have to be shut back down. Amen. I want to see us to continue to have our church open. And if we don't have any cases of COVID-19 within it, we can do this. But if we have a case of COVID-19 within the church, we will have to shut the church down for a while. So let's continue to pray that this won't happen. Let's pray for those that do have COVID-19. They didn't ask for it. They didn't want it. But they've caught it. So we do need to lift them up in prayer very highly tonight. And I'm going to go into scripture tonight over to Matthew, the 17th chapter. And the first verse of it says, And after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brought them up into a high mountain apart. He took them away from everybody else. They were about to see something no one else had ever seen at this particular time. And was transfigurated before them, and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as a light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Moses and Elijah was talking with Jesus about this time. The disciples said something that I'm sure amazed them. Could you imagine how they felt when they sat there and they watched Jesus being lifted up, uh, uh, praise God, and all of a sudden he lit up uh, uh, before their eyes and there appeared Elijah and Moses talking with Jesus uh, himself. Uh, these two men were from the Old Testament, uh, uh, praise God. And Moses and Elijah represented the Old Testament, uh, personifying the law uh, of the Old Testament, I believe. Uh, that's what this was trying to tell everybody, uh, uh, praise God, the law of the prophets. Uh, their presence indicates that the Old Testament scriptures uh, had been looking forward uh, to the Messiah, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, come and praise God. So when Christ did come, then all of a sudden there was a transfiguration. They even got to talk with Jesus. This was the Messiah that was going to bring, uh, uh, praise God, victory uh, and salvation uh, into the lives and the hearts of men uh, and women uh, all over the world, praise God, and even little children. Uh, hallelujah. Isn't that a great thing, praise God, to realize and uh, understand that this was showing uh, the fulfillment uh, of the law, praise God, under the prophets uh, in the beginning of grace under Jesus Christ. Did you all realize that? That's what the transfiguration was all about. It was showing the beginning of a new era, the beginning of a new walk within this world. And I believe, glory to God, it was a powerful miracle. Hallelujah for the disciples to be able to watch this and see what was taking place in front of their eyes. How many of you ever thought about that? It was a closing out of the Old Testament and the beginning of the new. It was a closing out of the law and the beginning of grace. Hallelujah salvation. Amen. Amen. 
I don't think I'd really thought of it that way until today. And I've read this, I've read it, and I've read it. Praise God, I've probably read to God a hundred times in my ministry, or maybe even more than that. I praise God, but I want you to understand today it really came to light in my mind what they were doing there. But the great thing was there were three of the disciples got to see this happen in front of their eyes. Well, glory. They should have been able to tell the story everywhere that they went. Praise God. And they begin to preach grace and salvation just a little while down the road from this. Amen. I like this tonight. Praise God. Well, hallelujah. I'm glad that the old uh, law was closed down. Uh, it wasn't just closed down. It was fulfilled. Uh, and then Jesus took it from there. Amen. Amen. Yes. All right. I don't know what you all think about it, but I think it was great. Amen. 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 I think it was a powerful, powerful move. Uh, praise God. Why haven't I seen this before? I'm about to shout uh, about what I've seen here. Uh, glory to God. Uh, I wasn't really sure why. Uh, Elijah, uh, praise God, and Moses was talking to Jesus uh, at this transfiguration. Uh, but then uh, the, then I answered Peter and said to uh, Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. And it was good for them to be there. They got to witness something no one else had ever witnessed uh, upon the face of this earth. Uh, praise God. Uh, he said, if you will let us make here three tabernacles, uh, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Wow. A bright cloud. Now, they've already watched Jesus Moses and Elijah talking to one another, transfigurated. Uh -huh. You can see through them. Praise God, in other words. He had already seen this, and then all of a sudden, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Hallelujah. And behold, a voice oh, wow. out of the cloud. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That voice that spoke out of that cloud said, which said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Amen. So again, I believe it. I don't think he was talking to, uh, to Moses or Elijah. I don't think he was talking to Jesus. I, I think he was talking to the disciples. Amen? Amen. And I think he's talking to you and I today to hear him uh, today. Amen? Praise God. Not just the disciples, uh, but this is my beloved son. Uh, hear ye him. Amen? Well, glory. I don't know if you're going to get excited about that or not, but that kind of stirs something in me yes, to know what Jesus was saying there. Well, Hallelujah. But there's more scriptures that will kind of back all this up too. Uh, I, I like to take time to uh, bring more scriptures in with it. Uh, uh, praise God. Uh, hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Uh, uh, going on a little bit. Uh, uh, this beloved son in whom I am well pleased uh, were the identical words uh, uh, that were spoken when Jesus uh, was baptized uh, uh, by John. Uh, uh, praise God. Matthew 3 and 17. Uh, it said, Lo, a voice uh, uh, from heaven saying, uh, This is my beloved son uh, in whom I am well pleased. Uh, Jesus said this two times, didn't he? Well pleased in him. Well pleased that he has come forth. Well pleased that he's willing to become the supreme uh, uh, sacrifice for all of mankind. Psalm 2 and 7 said, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten you. Isaiah 42 and 1 says, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. And that's exactly what has happened to you and I. We have had judgment come forth upon us and we have been delivered. Praise God. I thank God that Peter was one of them that was there that day because he was also that one that Cornelius sent his men to. Pray God asking him to come. And then when he went down and began to preach the gospel, of the Gentiles. Uh, the Bible said the Holy uh, Spirit fell upon them or the Holy Ghost uh, fell upon them uh, just like it did the Jews uh, on the day of Pentecost. Uh, I'm glad Jesus came not just for uh, uh, one people uh, uh, but the Bible uh, uh, teaches us that he's come for all uh, uh, different uh, uh, people around the world. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are uh, if you will accept him. Amen. That's right. Amen. Praise God. And he'll love you no matter what. 
Oh, I like that scripture. Praise the Lord. I like it. Praise the Lord. And glory to God that we found out uh, he called uh, a couple Old Testament prophets uh, uh, together with him and they talked. Uh, I would have been interested in knowing uh, uh, what they were talking about. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what they were talking about. Uh, uh, but I believe, uh, uh, praise God, uh, he might have been telling them, uh, all right, boys, I've got it from here. Y'all yeah, just go on back. I, I'll take care of it now. You believe you might have been saying that? Could be. Well, that's my story. Best I could come up with on it. Praise God. But I, I kind of like to think about what was taking place and what was happening. But it wasn't for their benefit. It was for our benefit. Amen. It was for the benefit of the disciples that was watching them. And it was uh, our benefit when we read this and see what happened. It was to the people's benefit around uh, at least three men when they began preaching and teaching the gospel uh, uh, to be able to share this with them, uh, who Jesus Christ really is. Now, this was before Jesus died uh, on the cross of Calvary. This is uh, uh, Jesus being uh, uh, transfigurated before them. Uh, in other words, he become translucent. Uh, uh, you could see through him, uh, uh, praise God, and then others also. Uh, that was a miracle, wasn't it? Amen. They saw something they had never thought they would ever see in this lifetime. Now, people nowadays would have thought, thought they saw ghosts, wouldn't they? Yeah. Well, Moses was dead for years. Elijah never died. You all realize that, don't you? Amen. Elijah was taken up in a chariot of fire. Praise God. And the Lord just called him forth. Hallelujah. And Moses came with him. Matthew 17 to 6 says, When the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. I believe I would have fell on my face if I heard a voice speaking out of heaven too, don't you? I believe I would have been shaken a little bit, praise God. I believe there would have been a fear of God enter into my heart and into my soul. Hallelujah. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, be not afraid. In other words, what you're seeing shouldn't scare you. This is God. This is uh, me, Jesus is saying, this is me. Uh, this is a blessing that I shared with you uh, that you could share with all the generations to come uh, that they might know uh, that I have come to fulfill the law. Amen. And bring grace uh, and faith uh, in the lives and hearts and souls. Uh, hallelujah. I'm glad today all we have to do is believe upon the Lord uh, Jesus Christ with all our heart uh, and we shall be saved. Amen. That tickled me to death that I have grace and salvation living in me. Hallelujah. And when they had lifted up their eyes, you see Jesus come to them, and then when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. So they didn't see Elijah and Moses any longer. But what fear they had while they were looking at this, and especially when the voice of God uh, spoke from heaven. Uh, I believe they just melted uh, uh, down uh, at their head, uh, uh, buried in their hands upon the ground, prostrate. Uh, uh, hallelujah. I believe they were probably actually shaken uh, because of what they had just seen. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but then Jesus uh, uh, told them not to be afraid. Uh, and he uh, uh, got them up, and he was alone was standing there uh, with them at that time. Uh, hallelujah. I've never had an experience like that. I, I don't know how I would have acted, uh, but probably not much different than they did. Amen? Amen? But I'm glad to know today that sometimes Jesus moves up on us yeah. and anoints us and brings blessing even today that we live in. Matthew 17 and 19 said, And they came down from the mountain. Jesus, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Now let me tell you, I don't think the disciples really understood what he just said. I don't believe that they understood uh, that he was actually going to die, go to Calvary and die. I, I, I think it was something that they heard. Have you ever heard something and not understood it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Ruth tells me all the time I'm doing that. But sometimes you can hear it, but you don't understand it. Praise God. You don't know hardly which direction to go with this, praise God. And that's, I believe that's exactly what the disciples were here. Matthew 12, verses 16 to 18, it says, And charged them that they should not make known 
make him known that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying behold my servant whom I have chosen my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased I will put my spirit upon him and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles praise God they expected no praise the Lord when Jesus comes that he was going to come back as a conqueror and a deliverer oh! praise God. hallelujah they were expecting a suffering servant Y'all think they were expecting a suffering servant? No. no. You think they were expecting somebody to be whipped, sped up on, hanged on the cross of Calvary, and died? When he, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, my goodness, he sent them out and had them to get a little old coat. Praise the Lord and bring in the little coat, did it? He rode that thing uh, into Jerusalem, uh, and I'm sure his feet was almost dragging the ground uh, on that. Uh, and they thought he would be riding a big white horse uh, to bring victory at that particular time. Uh, but let me tell you, he uh, was bringing forward uh, a salvation to you and I. That was a week before uh, he hanged on the cross of Calvary uh, and gave his life uh, uh, for you and I. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, but let me tell you, that white horse rider is coming again. Amen. And then the next time he comes back, he's coming in power. He's coming in authority. He's coming to set up a thousand year reign of Christ upon the face of this earth. Then they're going to see that mighty warrior. But he came in the first place to become the perfect and supreme sacrifice for you and I. And we might be able to have salvation. Glory. He talked about the Gentiles here. He even included us in the plan of salvation. I like that. Matthew 17 and then says that his disciples asked him, uh, saying, uh, Why then uh, say the scribes that Elijah must come first? Uh, well, glory to God. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall come first and restore uh, all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Did Elijah not come in the form of John the Baptist? Was it John the Baptist in the spirit of Elijah? As they come forward, but they didn't recognize him. They didn't realize uh, just exactly who he was. Uh, and Elijah will come again uh, in Revelation as one of the two, uh, uh, praise God, uh, uh, prophets coming back uh, upon the face of the earth. So he will come again uh, also. Uh, uh, Malachi 3 and 1 said, Behold, I will send uh, my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. Uh, talking about John the Baptist. Uh, and the Lord uh, whom you seek uh, shall suddenly come to his temple. Uh, even the messenger of the covenant uh, whom you delight in uh, behold he shall come uh, saith the Lord of hosts uh, hallelujah what's up long after John the Baptist began to uh, uh, preach up repent ye for the kingdom of God uh, is at hand uh, and then one day uh, he looked out and he saw Jesus coming uh, uh, praise God uh, he had been instructed uh, about the Lord and when he saw uh, a man coming in the spirit uh, of a dove descending upon him uh, that would be the Savior uh, hallelujah. And when Jesus came and asked him to baptize him, uh, uh, hallelujah, uh, John looked at him and said, It is I uh, that need to be baptized uh, of you. Uh, I'm unworthy to even loosen the sandals uh, upon your feet. Uh, but Jesus said, Suffer to let it be so uh, that all righteousness uh, uh, might be fulfilled. Uh, and again, uh, he was, uh, Jesus uh, was baptized by John. Uh, the Bible said uh, that there was a dove, uh, and the Spirit came down upon him like a dove uh, and lit up on him. Uh, uh, praise God. We're seeing the Son. Uh, uh, we're seeing uh, uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, and then we heard the Father speaking from heaven. Uh, uh, this is my beloved Son uh, in whom uh, I am well pleased. Uh, uh, well, glory to God. Uh, Elijah prophesied of that. Uh, uh, behold, I will send you, Elijah, the prophet before the coming of uh, uh, the great and dreadful uh, uh, day of the Lord. Malachi 4 and 5 uh, is prophesying again. Uh, uh, we're going to see uh, uh, the Lord come again uh, uh, after the tribulation period. I go ready to God and rain a uh, terror upon the Antichrist and the false prophet uh, and all those that stood with him. Uh, uh, Malachi 4 6 said, uh, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers uh, uh, to the children and the heart of the children uh, uh, to the fathers, uh, uh, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Wow, right. boy, that's a promise. We better love one another, haven't we? Yeah. And you better love that son there. Son, you better love that dad there. Amen. Because if we don't, the Bible said he'll smack us with a curse. Amen. Wow. Amen. That's how simple a word that is tonight. Matthew 17, 12 says, But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, 
And they knew him not, talking about John the Baptist, but I have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Amen. And Jesus suffered. Wow, did Jesus suffer. Yes, did. Matthew 17, 13 said that the disciples understood that he spoke unto them of John the Baptist. Yes. They understood that there was a forerunner. <laughs> Elijah had came in the person of John the Baptist, or his spirit did. He didn't. But his spirit uh, uh, came through John the Baptist. And when they were come to the multitude, uh, they come to him, a certain man, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on me, my son, oh my son, for his, he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falls into the fire and oft times into the water. Now I want you to really take note of what happened right here. And I'm going to break some things down on it. I brought him to your disciples. He needed help. That boy needed help. Needed somebody to do something for him. And they could not cure him. Are we in the same shape sometimes that these are? Do we lack the faith of God the way that we need to have it? Matthew 17, 16 is bringing out a point there to us. We need to really hang on to that and understand what it says. Then Jesus said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. Now he was talking to the disciples here. He wasn't talking to the world. How long shall I be with you? In other words, how long uh, am I going to have to do these things uh, when you can't do them? Uh, how long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. Wow. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Now here it comes. Then the disciples came to Jesus and said, Why could not we cast him out? What was the problem? Do I have too much flesh in me? Yeah. Do I have things within my heart and soul that shouldn't be there? Is there sin in my life? Is there something that the Lord isn't pleased with? And Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, because you didn't believe enough. Yeah. You didn't have me within your heart strong enough to understand what you can do. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove uh, here to yonder place, and it shall remove, uh, and nothing shall be impossible uh, unto you. Uh, now talking about a small grain of mustard seed. Uh, talking about a little small portion of faith. Uh, but he was telling his disciples uh, you didn't even have uh, this small portion of faith uh, within you uh, that you could cast this out. Uh, hallelujah. But here's uh, the catcher and the kicker to all of it. Uh, he said, how be it uh, this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. Uh -huh. Uh-oh. Are we doing it? Not enough. Are we praying and fasting? What would happen if we laid hands on somebody like these disciples did? They could not pray that demon out of that man. They couldn't get that sickness out of his body. What would happen if we laid hands on somebody uh, uh, today praying for them to be healed? Would we have enough faith in God? Would we have enough spirit uh, in our hearts and in our souls? Uh, or would we be like the disciples saying, Lord, uh, why couldn't we cast it out? It's a simple fact of the matter. We need to be closer to God. All of us need to be closer to God. Amen to that. Amen. Matthew 17, 22 says, And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men. I don't think they had understood this yet. I don't think they understood where Jesus was going yet. Praise God. And they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceedingly sorry. But still, I don't think they knew what was taking place and what was happening. And here, this verse I'm about to read to you talk to, to us. What do we owe to man? What we do, do we owe to our government? What do we owe to God? Praise God. It said that when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doeth not your master pay tribute? In other words, don't you pay tax? Praise God. And he said, Yes. And when he was come into the house of Jesus, prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? 
of whom do the king of the earth take custom or tribute of their own children or of strangers? Peter said unto him, of strangers. Jesus said unto him, then are the children free? Notwithstanding, unless we should offend them, go to the sea and cast a hook and take up the fish that you first come up, that first comes up, and when you have opened it, you shall find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and for you. Praise God. In other words, Jesus is saying, you know what? Everything belongs to me. Uh -huh. I can take that which has nothing and bring something from it. But also he wants Peter to realize that, you know, in him there's nothing impossible. In God, nothing impossible. Do we have enough strength in our hearts and in our soul tonight to be the delivering children of God we need to be? Have we got the faith of a grain of mustard seed? Y'all quiet now. We probably don't have, do we? We probably don't have that faith of that grain of mustard seed. But Jesus is telling us tonight, listen, look up, realize and understand the Old Testament closed out. The law fulfilled itself. Now I have brought grace and salvation into your lives and into your hearts. Now I couldn't get into the part of it where, and go on to where when Jesus was hung uh, on the cross of Calvary uh, and all the disciples uh, after he was put in, uh, uh, praise God, to the tomb and so forth, uh, didn't know what to do. Uh, old Peter said, uh, well, I go a fishing. He didn't know what to do. Uh, he had no idea. I don't think if they thought all the way to that time uh, that Jesus was going to be resurrected uh, on the third day. Uh, but I'm glad on that third day when he come out of that tomb uh, after going into uh, a death, hell, and the grave and taking the keys uh, away from Satan. Uh, I was glad when he came out of that tomb uh, and spoke to Mary uh, and cried out, uh, uh, Mary, uh, uh, glory to God. Uh, and when he cried, Mary, Mary recognized uh, who he was uh, and she preceded him into town. Uh, uh, but I don't believe that the disciples really, uh, really knew uh, who he was or believed that he was resurrected uh, until he was in that room that day uh, and they all uh, was gathered together. The Bible said he come through uh, uh, the door. And then they begin to recognize him. They begin to remember what the scripture said about Jesus Christ dying. And in three days being resurrected and made whole. Amen. Amen. Well, that's not a long message tonight. Maybe I'm getting back in the old groove. I don't know. But that message tonight is saying this. Listen, we have one of the greatest privileges of any men and women that have ever walked the face of this earth. We've got grace and salvation. Amen? We've got a Savior that loves us. Amen. So I'm going to pray tonight. Heavenly Father, I come before this night again in Jesus' name and honor you and glorify your name from the depths of my heart and my soul. Lord, if there's any tonight that have needs or any that are unsaved tonight, I pray for them. I pray, Lord, that you'd reach out to their hearts and their souls and help them to find you. For, Lord, you're easy to be found. All we have to do is believe in you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Lord, you're willing to come into our hearts and our lives. I pray that you would lead us and guide us, blessed Savior, as a church and as a body of Christ. That we can perform the miracles that you would have us to perform here in the house of God. Lord, we see souls being saved, sanctified, and filled with your spirit. Father, that we would become instruments in your hand beyond these walls. And Lord, that we'd be uh, evangelists, blessed Jesus, disciples, uh, uh, working in the communities and drawing in the unsaved uh, to see them saved and made whole. Pray tonight, Lord, for these uh, with coronavirus, that you would touch them and heal them and strengthen them and make them whole. And Lord, tonight I'm praying most of all for the unsaved. Help us to win them. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I think I'll get it. <laughs>